Hello and welcome to part four of Dev Maths and Snatch Refresher Course Lecture One. Now we have a quick look at some other kinds of polynomial. Um, first of all, cubics, which just follows on from quadratics because cubics have got the highest power three. So there's some examples of cubics, but the highest power is three. Um, let's plot some of these and you get this kind of shape. So I'd like to compare that to the quadratic kind of shape. It's just a simple U shape or uh, an inverted U. The um, power three or cubics often have two humps. So this would be an S shape or an inverted S. And if you think about many of these shapes arise in economics, if you can't think, pause and think for a moment. And they're often used for total cost curves. Because when you start doing a new activity, perhaps this green one, if you, if you do nothing, it costs you nothing. But as you start to produce a few things, for example, some sort of new tool or new microchip, it's very expensive to produce the first few. But then as you produce more and more, you have economies of scale and you find that it's cheaper to produce more and more, or the marginal cost goes down. Then after a while, you start running out of capacity of that factory that you built. So it starts getting more expensive. So. That's the green one. The blue one might request might reflect the initial cost of building the factory before you've even started. So there's a cost of producing zero. So they are met in total cost functions. Now, so far, these polynomials seem quite simple. Um, that they're, they're linear, the quadratic, and the cubic. And it generalized, you can have power four, power five, power six. Where it can get more confusing is when you have fractional powers. And particularly when you start getting into calculus, that can really confuse you. So let's try and get this really clear from the start. If you remember what this means, four to the power two, that means four times four. So it gives you 16. Now, by definition, if four to the power two is 16, that means that if we start from 16, 16 to the power one over two, one half, must take you back to four. It reverses this. So 16 to the power half gives you Square root of 16, which is 4. Um, you have to give this extra command. This percentage means the last, the last result. So simplify the last result and you get 4. Um, similarly, 2 to the power of 5 means this. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 there. 5 2s multiplied together gives you 32. So if you start with 32 to the power of 1 over 5, that should take you back and give you two. So it should reverse it, gives you two. So this is the opposite to the power of five. Could also be called the fifth root. Now you can combine these with ordinary powers. So 81 to the power of three over four. If you want to pause and see if you can predict what this is gonna come out as, it means first you find the fourth root, that's the four, and then you cube it. Now the fourth root of 81, 81 to the power a quarter, is actually because three to the power four is equal to three times three times three times three. So this is three times three is nine, times three is 27, times three is 81. So 81 to the one quarter is three. So 81 to the three quarters is 81 to the quarter all to the power three, which is three to the power three, which is 27. So what you can do is, first of all, to find this, first you calculate this to get three, and then you, to get from here to here, you raise this to the power three. So three to the power three is 27. Okay, let's see if this agrees with the computer's calculation. This gives you 27. Alternatively, there is another way you could do it. Um, that's the way I did do it, like that. First I got to three, 
and I went to 27. Alternatively, you could do it by doing first 81 to the power 3, but that will give you a colossal number, and then do that to the power uh, quarter. So that's like this. So this is 81 times 81 times 81, 531,441. And then the cube root of that is 27. So there's two methods, but this is easier. Okay, finally, let's just look at some graphs of these fractional powers. Okay, so we're going to look at the graph of, this is y is x to the half, which you can write that this is the same as y is square root of x or x to the half. And then a more complicated one, y is equal to x, to the, x plus 4 to the power 3 over 7, like this. So you get this kind of thing. So the, the blue one is the blue one's the power half, and the this is the one where this one here. So this the economic context here, if you want to pause and think, is the the concept of um, diminishing returns. So if you look at the impact of some intervention, some some project, initially you have a big impact and then the impact tails off if you have some fixed uh, other input. So if you're putting um, if you're putting more fertilizer onto a field and if the field stays the same size, you get lots of extra output to start and then eventually it starts tailing off because it's less effective to put more and more fertilizer on the same plot, for example. The same if you're putting more and more labor time into the same plot. This brown one has got the same kind of idea except there's, a, there's some sort of fixed output at the beginning. So there's lots of context for this diminishing returns thing, as we'll see later on. Okay, in the next video, we'll look at exponential and logarithmic functions, which are particularly important. But for now, thanks for watching.